What is up, everybody? Nessa here. Welcome to what is most likely going to be the finale for Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Today, we are heading up Ganon's castle, and you can hear the organ playing. We are... Oh, man, I'm al I almost am already playing badly, but we are heading up there today, and we are going to cause some havoc. So, you might see that I have returned to the... The, uh, okay, I'm already playing kind of badly. Let's spin attack these guys. Uh, you might have seen I have returned to the Helion Shield. I just like how it looks better, and at this point we don't need the Mirror Shield anymore. So, we're past all the puzzles that required Mirror Shield, so we're just going to be heading forward with the Helion Shield with the green tunic. I know a lot of people <coughs> tend to really like using the red tunic for basically the whole game once you have it, but I ain't about it, I don't know. So, heading up here, I actually really like this room. Now, if you guys didn't know... Uh, something something about this room was kind of interesting is this room was seen in a lot of beta footage for this Wow, he's just walking over the fire. He doesn't care at all. This room was seen in a lot of beta footage for this game. And as it turns out, uh, Ocarina of Time was originally going to be a hub-based game similar to Mario 64 where uh, each trial would be like its own section of the game and you would t the whole game would take place in Ganon's castle so there's remnants of that there's footage that has remnants of that and a lot of the rooms look like these rooms with these exact same flame pillars like these like bony looking structures of the flame pillars and this room is a room I love now I've always made it a self challenge to try to fight both of these guys at the same time so we're gonna try to accomplish it again I'm gonna see if I can do it without getting hit I will do it every single time I play this game. I don't know why. It's just a self-imposed challenge. Oh, man. I'm dead. Or not dead. I'm hit. But it was close. I'm only a couple hits away. I actually think spin attack's really good here because it has max distance. And then once they're in staggerable mode, it's fine. But either way, that's two more Gerudo ladies that we just killed. Which is kind of sad and disappointing, but another thing about having double defense is that whenever you pick up a heart, you're essentially picking up two hearts, which is just bonkers. I think it's very interesting that <coughs> double defense never came back after Majora's Mask. It's kind of weird because I think it would have helped a lot in games like Twilight Princess where you need five heart pieces to get another. I don't know, I'm full health, full man. I don't know why I'm going for that but uh <coughs> games like twilight princess you need five heart pieces to complete a heart and it's god the organs getting louder we're coming up here on the top i think yeah but it, it's probably just a bit overkill having double defense and i mean it really made sense in majora's mask where like there was only seven heart seven hearts that you could get without having to get heart pieces so it really mattered but <coughs> Man, I am coughing a lot today, and it sucks, but we are here. There's Princess Zelda in the 50 rupee. A pink rupee, huh? I think 50 is supposed to be purple, but it usually appears pink in these games when it's dropped by enemies and stuff. We have the Triforce of Courage. Ganondorf. Zelda has the Triforce of Wisdom. And Ganondorf... We get full healed here for some reason. I'm not sure why, but it happens. So I didn't need to break those pots at all. The Triforce parts are resonating. They're combining into one again. <coughs> the two Triforce parts that I could not capture on that day seven years ago. I didn't expect they would be hidden within you two. And he laughs. And now, finally, all the Triforce parts have gathered here. The dolly zoom, let's go! These toys are too much for you. I command you to return them to me. There it is, he finally has the Triforce of power. Nessa, I can't help you. Because of the waves of darkness, I can't get close. I'm sorry, Nessa. <clears throat> and they try to make this giant... Oh, we'll see later, but great evil King Ganondorf. So first things first, get away from the floors that are going to fall. 
Second thing, second. We're playing tennis again. We can't lock up. Oh, we can't lock on because Navi can't get close because of the dark magic, which is kind of a kind of an interesting mechanic, but we're gonna be using some spin attacks here. We're gonna just keep mashing spin attack. Eventually he's gonna get hit. Uh wait. Okay, I missed. That sucks. I shot it through his cape. Check this out. So I don't know how you guys feel about the tennis games that are prevalent. Like, I can't believe I shot it through his cape twice, dude. Alright, no more playing around. Spin attack. Spin attack. Spin attack. At him. Bam. Got him. Jump. And fall all the way down. Dude, are you serious? I'm, I've never thrown so hard at this fight. This fight's usually over in like two or three minutes. Are you serious? I'm literally throwing at this. Okay. Alright, we're fine, we're fine, we're fine. This is... Alright, here we go. This time, we got it. Okay. Shoot him. Don't miss. Don't miss. Straight on jump. Okay, alright, we did some good damage, we did some good damage, we're doing it, we're doing it, we're doing it, we're fighting him. <clears throat> Look at his cape, it's all tattered. I don't, now, I don't know how you guys feel about the magical tennis, but it's like, it's in every Zelda game since Link to the Past. I don't actually know if it's in Breath of the Wild, but like, it's in Link to the Past, it's in Link's Awakening, it's in Ocarina, it's in Wind Waker. I'm gonna assume that it's in the Oracle games, but I don't know for sure. It's in Twilight Princess. I'm pretty- well, I think it's in Twilight Princess, but I could be wrong. I'm pretty sure you have, like, a very slight game of it with, uh, spoilers. Uh, like, Possessed Princess Zelda. I don't remember. I don't know if it's actually in Breath of the Wild. I'm, I'm, I'm sure it is. Okay, this is his big boom attack. Now, one time I was racing my friend. One time I was racing my friend in Randomizer and we were both at Ganon. I can't believe I missed again. We were both at Ganon and uh, he couldn't figure out how to reflect that attack. And he kept, he kept using that attack like 10, 11 times in a row. And my friend just kept getting hit by it and dying because he only had like 5 hearts. It was a disaster. And he kept asking me like, what can I do about this? And I'm like... Bro, you're ahead of me in this race right now. Why would I... Why would I give you any, uh... Dude! I can't aim today! This is ridiculous! Alright, big boom attack, fine. I don't think you have to do a fully charged spin attack, but it just makes it easier. Okay, I'm hitting him. Got him. Alright. Alright, that's it. And he holds his chest. He starts breathing heavily. The great evil King Ganondorf, beaten by this kid. Spits out red blood because we're on version 1.0. That'll be green blood in every other version of the game. That's it. And using the last of his might, he crumbles the top of this tower. Which I thought this was... I always thought this was so cool. It's just... <coughs> So there's something special about seeing like the main bad guy not giving up and doing extra stuff. You know what I mean? Like Bowser and Paper Mario 64 becoming like big Super Bowser at the end of that game, which I gotta play that game someday. But I was actually considering doing it after Pikmin One. And then I decided against it, and like the day I decided against it, Chugga Conroy started uploading his series on it, and I was like, wow. Imagine if I just started doing that like the exact same time as Chugga Conroy. Ganondorf, pitiful man. Without a strong, righteous mind, he could not control the power of the gods and <coughs> Nessa, listen to me. This tower will collapse soon. With his last breath, Ganondorf's trying to crush us in the ruins of the tower, we need to hurry and escape. Please follow me. Now, there's actually a, 
Uh, wow, the frame rate at this part. I forgot how low the frame rate is at this part. Uh -oh. There's actually a bug near the end of this escape sequence where the game can crash. I'm gonna try very hard to not have that happen, but it's possible that the game just crashes and I gotta redo everything from the beginning of this episode to now because I haven't saved. <coughs> so, we're gonna try to avoid that. There's also like, if I do a roll like this and I roll into one of these fire things on the ground or one lands on me wrong, there's also a chance that it crashes. So, trying to avoid rolling here, even though I love rolling basically everywhere else in the game. I love how Zelda can just walk across these. <laughs> she doesn't even have float in Super Smash Brothers. Imagine if Zelda had float like Peach does. I wonder if that would change her at all, because she's always like pretty bad. Like one of the worst characters in every Zelda er, every Smash game. Because she's a very hard hitter, but she's very slow. And Smash and most fighting games are all about speed. Like the size of your hitboxes and the speed that they come out is what matters more than anything else. It's in my personal perspective, that's how it is. Like, it would be better to have, like, really fast, really weak hitboxes that combo together than really strong, really slow hitboxes, even if they can kill at, like, 30%. Okay, we have to get Zelda out of here. Good thing I know how to fight these guys. <coughs> now, you might be asking why you're not using the big Goron sword, and we will be answering that very, very soon. I got, I got... I got lit. It's lit, yo. It's not even April. For those that understand, you understand. For those that don't, die, buddy. I need you to die before your friend responds. Okay. We're good. We're good. Thank you, Nessa. Now, let's hurry. Now, I, remember, I still have two full heart uh, fairies, so... Damage is basically irrelevant to me still. Which kind of makes it a little anticlimactic. Maybe someday I'll revisit this game with a three, uh, a three heart run. Maybe I'll do, maybe whenever I do Master Quest, it'll be a three heart run. Just for the, uh, sake of it. Plus, it would save a lot of time on having to 100% stuff. I, I don't know, if I ever play Master Quest, I probably will do all the Sculptulas, because the Sculptulas in the dungeons have different, uh, locations. And some of them are, like, kind of nasty. But, do I really need to show all the heart pieces again when I've already done it in this game? Eh, maybe. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Also, there's a lot more changes to rooms with different enemies. I've never done a three heart run of that game. There's this free dead here, and I hate this free dead. This free dead grabs me every time I play this game. Because I always try to fight him when I could, I could definitely just go past him on the right side. And it would be fine. But I always try to fight him. Now this is the room that can crash if I walk into the wrong thing. I'm very carefully navigating this. Please don't. Okay. And we're here. This is the exit. <coughs> We've escaped the castle with about a minute remaining. Which is not bad. Not bad. And as we'll see. The castle started blowing up smoke coming out of every orifice that's that sounds weird i don't like how i said that <coughs> still coughing still sick the castle slowly blowing up collapsing to the ground this this ending is just it's so cool For, just imagine this in 1998 imagine you, you're coming off of like Super Mario World and Donkey Kong Country and you're like yeah those games are amazing don't get me wrong they're fantastic games but like you jump into 3D you get your first 3D console and you're playing this and Mario 64 and it's like Mario 64 has like the most insane movement of that like probably the like of the 90s and maybe even like the early 2000s I don't I mean in my opinion a game with better movement than Mario 64 hasn't come out yet, but it's over. It's finally over. Imagine it back then. That's I'm sorry I couldn't help you in the battle before. <clears throat> One. What was that noise? What was that noise? Whose footprints are these? 
What is that sound? We walk forward to investigate the noise, and what happens? Fire. <coughs> and he's still alive. And he looks very evil now. He doesn't even have pupils anymore. His eyes are just beastly. And I think this, for people that grew up with Zelda 1 and Link to the Past, this was probably one of the best moments in the game for them. Imagine, like, you love Zelda 1 and Link to the Past, and then they just pull out Ganon. No subtitle for his name, no, like, King of Darkness Ganon. It's just Ganon. The Master Sword is disarmed from us. There's no way he's going to hold me back again. This time we fight together. <coughs> so, this fight is pretty interesting. What you're, what you're mainly supposed to be doing here is you shoot him in the head with light arrows, you rotate around to the back, and you shoot his tail with light arrows. But he uses a lot of magic, right? And it's pretty slow. So, since we've spent numerous amounts of hours completing the 100% of this game, which I will just very casually go through right now, we will equip our big Gorn sword, and we're going to be rolling under his feet right now. And we're going to be slashing him in the butt. And he's not going to be able to do anything about it because he's slow, and he's ugly, and he's big. And we will be using the big Goron sword. Now, as I was saying earlier in the game, <coughs> every enemy in the game takes like a damage value, right? So the big Goron sword does three, Master Sword does two, Pokemon Sword does one. Ganondorf is the exception of that rule where Ganondorf takes extra damage from the Master Sword, and I think that's a nice touch. But this fight's pretty cheesable. I mean, most of the final bosses in Zelda games are pretty cheesable. I'm not particularly cheesing it. I mean, I'm just using my resources to my advantage. And I've done it a million times, so there's no way I can, like, pretend that I'm having difficulties with it. I mean, I've lost to this boss fight before, and... Use the Master Sword. Destroy Ganon with the Sacred Sword. We're gonna get back in here real quick and get a free hit on his butt before he can get up. Because he's staggered. We're gonna keep doing our thing. We're still doing our thing here. I think last hit. I'm, I'm confused. <laughs> That's it. <coughs> and Zelda. Finally, with her chance, her opportunity. I'm using my power to hold the evil king. Use your sword and deliver the final blow. All of her might to hold him. <clears throat> Our sword powered up with light. And that is that. GG's Ganondorf. Six ages now. Ancient creators of Hyrule. Now open the sealed door and send the evil incarnation of darkness into the void of the evil realm. The evil realm, the sacred realm, the sacred realm, the sacred realm. We heard Sakerum so much in the last episode. <coughs> and we get to see all of our friends and all the sages, and of course it ends on Saria because she was our close childhood friend. The first one we encountered, the first person we saw in the entire game. Unless you count Navi as a person, which Navi's a fairy. I'm talking about like humanoid. I guess Navi's technically like a humanoid underneath the light, but you never really get to see it. They use it to represent her. You, soldier boy. Soldier boy, tell him. Curse you, Zelda. Curse you, sages. Curse you, Nessa. In lowercase. They definitely could have put that in uppercase. Someday when the seal is broken. That is when I will exterminate your descendants. 
Yeah, so Ganondorf's eyes are very bloodshot as an adult, but as a kid, he has, like, normalish eyes. That's something to note. Just a little fun fact for you. Ganondorf always comes back. That is the prophecy. As long as the Triforce of Power is in my hand. <coughs> and now we are in... Heaven? The Sacred Realm? Ranala's Arena from Elden Ring? Rom the Vacuous Spider from Bloodborne? Elden Beast? Thank you, Nessa. Thanks to you, Ganondorf has been sealed inside the evil realm. Thus peace will once again reign in this world for a time. All the tragedy that has befallen Hyrule was my doing. I was so young, I could not comprehend the consequences of trying to control the Sacred Realm. I dragged you into it too. Now it is time for me to make up for my mistakes. Uh oh! You must lay the Master Sword to rest and close the door of time. However, by doing this, the road between times will be closed. Nessa, give the Ocarina to me. As a sage, I can return you to your original time with it. And this mechanic of going back in time plays a crucial role in the sequel of this game, Majora's Mask. When peace returns to Hyrule, it will be time for us to say goodbye. <coughs> it's kind of interesting that... Now go home, Nessa. Regain your lost time. Home. Where you're supposed to be. The way you're supposed to be. It's kind of interesting that time almost plays a bigger role in Majora's Mask than it does in the game that has time in the title of it. But Majora's Mask is great, so... And this ending has always been very melancholy to me. It's like the first major big scale game that I ever beat. You know, I beat Mario 64 before this. Thank you, Nessa. Goodbye. <coughs> I think the two. I think Mario 64 is the only game I beat before this game. I think. Well, I'm not sure. I'm not actually sure how old I was when I finally beat this game, but. Shigeru Miyamoto, one, one of the greatest. And this ending and this song, I just, there's so many memories to this game. I really love it and everything it's ever done. Yeah, I mean, it really, I mean, I grew up with this game, right? So, everything this game's done to affect my life, who I am, I mean, it's, it's just by existing, this game has literally changed the course of not just mine, but many other people's interest in games, the way they perceive art, the way they think about it, and I mean, <coughs> it's really just a masterpiece, honestly, that's how I feel about it, it's a masterpiece. It's, yes, it's dated, it has its issues that are mainly caused by the time it was created, but it's, none of that matters, because as a whole package, and especially if you look at it through the lens of when it came out. It really is just like a different scale compared to the stuff around it at the time. I mean, <coughs> yeah, stuff like Final Fantasy 7 and 8 and 9 came out at the time, and those are also major scale, but like a 3D action game with this kind of freedom and XYZ axis and the world itself and the detail in it, and oh man, it's just, it's on a different level, honestly. And then you have like, the whole concept of growing up with the game, I think that's something that'll be really hard for people to understand if they didn't. And I don't feel like any of the more recent Zelda games really have that same impact, personally. I mean, it really is like, getting to see this as like the first 3D Zelda game and then grow along with the other 3D Zelda games as they come out, it's like perfectly timed like key aspect of why I like the games I like and how I like the games I like really did change <coughs> motion capture I didn't know this game had motion capture that's kind of crazy but really did change like the entire 
direction my life would go in for artistic value and everything like that. Like, this was the first major game I beat. I mean, I beat Mario 64. I don't remember when Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland came out. If that was like 2001. I'm not actually sure exactly what year I beat this in. Because I was like 2 or 3 when it came out. So I definitely played it more around like the 2000. Like, it's probably 2000, 2001 is when I first started getting really into the game when I was really young. Like, 5? I love this dance scene. Seeing everybody all happy. Your, your efforts actually made change in the world and it's all positive change. You get the three, uh, the three brothers. <laughs> the windmill man getting spun around. And the, the running man with the bunny hood who actually doesn't run around like that if you didn't give him the bunny hood. So that's a pretty cool detail. <coughs> Opona and Malin. I wonder if they're there if you didn't rescue them from the ranch. <coughs> but all these shopkeepers who do not have legs in this game. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier, but that's why they're cropped to the top. Now the Gerudo ladies finally leaving the Gerudo Valley. Finally coming to Hyrule. Big Goron could literally just squish anybody here on accident. Mido and King Zora together. I love it. Mido hated us, but we really did make him proud. I don't know what's the right terminology there. Proved him wrong? That's probably a better way to put it. I doubt he would still hate Link after everything. And there go all the sages. Now, here on top of Death Mountain. It's just, it, the world feels so big, and it's really not. I mean, compared to stuff like Elden Ring, I'm going to keep talking about it. Look at how cute this is. Saria and Dernia, the two ladies, my girlfriend and my side girlfriend, and then Impa, mother of, basically mother of Zelda, and the sky fades away. And here we are back at the Temple of Time. Zelda has returned us to our original time so we can make up for lost time. And with that, <coughs> we are back to our child selves. The link to the past has been completed. And the Great Fairy, or the Great Deku Tree, assigns fairy helpers to the people so that they can complete certain tasks. Help the people complete certain tasks, and once those tasks are complete, the fairy is no longer required, so Navi decides to leave. <coughs> and Man, I'm getting kind of teary-eyed. <laughs> I love this. And fun fact, this little song right here with the bells and everything was a copied song from Star Fox 64 a long time ago on YouTube. I left a comment saying, wow, this Star Fox 64 copied this from Ocarina of Time. And somebody very, very quickly corrected me and talked a lot of smack to me. And that was like 2009. So I'll always remember that, that that's actually from Star Fox 64. But... Here we are, back at Princess Zelda. There's Mario, or there's Luigi and Bowser in the background. And with that, we get to see the princess. We get to warn her of what's happening in the future. We can change the sands of time, so. That is Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. The end. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this game. This is one half of my favorite game of all time. I collectively count this game and Majora's Mask as one single package because they're basically the same gameplay experience. So, with that guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll join me on the next game, which is undecided right now, but should be coming tomorrow. Drop a comment and a like below. Leave me The comment I'm asking for today is 
What is your favorite Zelda game? And why is it your favorite Zelda game? So for now, guys, thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care, everybody.